Welcome to Into the Boundary, the podcast with no boundaries, where sports meet real life. I am your host, Lou Mobley, and today we have one of the most underrated, most versatile ballers to come out of the city of Philadelphia, two-time All-Catholic selection, two-time Philadelphia Catholic League champion, played at the University of Rhode Island, Jamal Wilson. So what's up, bro? Very much, man. Just happy to be here, getting a chance to rap with you. I know I ain't seen you since high school, man. Been a minute. Been a, minute. a lot of things changed, man. What hasn't, man? Just everything, man. Just being a father, you know what I'm saying? Me and my fiance, and just growing up. That's the biggest thing. Yeah, definitely. Growing up. Yeah, so I just remember you being super smooth. Your mm-hmm. game was smooth. Your mm-hmm. game and how you were in real life was real similar, you know. Yeah, always absolutely. been a Always been a uh, stand-up dude, and uh, we shared a lot of laughs in that mm-hmm. hallway. Absolutely. Yeah. I was just rapping to uh, so my best friend, uh, Orion Otterbridge. He went to Rhode Island with me. Yeah. And um, me and him reminisce a lot about high school and where we were then and where we are now and then learning throughout the whole time. And Newman was like a... I don't think nobody really knew how important Newman was and in, in shaping me moving forward. and. But the, like you said, them hallways, like I, it was funny because going to college too, um, Dave and Kadeem and all of them, yeah. I was seeing them on the party wave and doing what they was doing and it was always good to see all y'all doing well. Because right. once we, you know, once 12th grade came, you kind of just, I mean, you just hear about each other. But it's always good to actually see like, hey, all right, they doing that, they doing that, they doing something positive, nobody in the streets are doing nothing. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, no, it's just, you know what it made me remind me of? Um, mm-hmm. Like, being a 16, 17-year-old kid, like, not even knowing this much about myself. Mm-hmm. Like, um, in terms of, like, my character, the things that I would overcome, and, you know, things that at 17, like, man, I don't never want to go through that, and mm-hmm. the things I'm able to make it through and redefine and reshape myself into the man I am today. Absolutely, man. I mean, like you said, like, from ninth to 12th grade has a lot to do with who you'll be after you get out of there, so that's important, and I think now, the, the time we live in is, is the conditioning is to just breeze through that hurry up and be an adult. Right. You know what I'm saying? And we missed out on a lot of important things we needed to learn. Like, one thing that with me was like the word constructivism, learning through experience. Like, right. that's the best way to learn. You could tell me to do something a thousand times, but until I go and see for myself, that that's when I'll really get the lesson. You know what I'm saying? So high school is a bunch of that. Right. And I think we... We overlook it, and then look at our city. Like, how, how many high schools are closed now? How many kids is missing out on them four years? Right. They twelve years old, and then deciding whether they gonna rap, trap, or go be be an athlete. Right. Way much more, way much more out here, man. That, and we overlook how important high school was. Yeah, like even like uh, interest wise, you never know that. Like you know, say you had basketball in front of you, mm-hmm. I had football in front of me. You never knew that you were interested in all these other things mm-hmm. that are a big part of your personality. You know, mm-hmm. like, um, and, like for example, like you know, like I said, I just was rapping with Tony right, on here. Right, right, like, he he never knew that he'd probably fall in love with filmmaking and movies and directing right, stuff. You know, right. so just even like interest wise, it's different. You know. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, and it's funny, like, uh, like. A little backstory on me with sports. Um, I started. I was actually playing football first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, it was so funny because I always was the biggest kid. Cause you know, first of all, I was born in Norristown. Moved to South Philly when I was twelve. Right. So um, being in Norristown, I was like, you know, I was like six one, six two when I was like eleven. Right. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> I was a monster, but. I remember first wanting to play football and uh, the uh, the running back from the Falcons, Jamal Anderson, right. the dirty bird dance he used to do. Yeah. So like it stemmed from there and started playing football. Um, I had older cousins that would rough me up and because I was a softie, yeah. but they but they helped me, you know, understand like yo like you you be alright if you had a little bit of heart, you know what I'm saying? If you could be physical because you're gonna be a slim dude, right. <clears throat> but if, if you could be physical, you can play whatever sport you want. Right. So. Um, the football was was good because my first year I'll never forget uh, Narstown Bandits, 105 pound. I was built like I am now, but I was playing guard. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I was, no bull. I was playing guard, and um, I remember like the next year. I think that might have been like seventh or eighth grade. The next year, 
I got to middle school and learned the right way to play. And I started quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So it was just like, with a little bit of teaching, a little bit of TLC I got at that age and, and really locked in, I went from not being cared about playing a you know, a lineman and then the next year throwing the ball, they talking about he might be varsity's starting quarterback. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's, I mean, the football thing was my first interest in it. The sports in general kind of gave me an identity. So that's what it was for me. Like, it was more so like I found who I am and kind of like, jumped in that bucket and stayed there. Well, that's dope, man. I didn't know that, man. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, I'm a South Philly dude. Mm -hmm. I'm from uh, Grace Ferry, 31st mm -hmm. Street. Mm -hmm. um, we had all these schoolyards, Oren Reed schoolyard, James Alpin schoolyard, and we all fell in love, even as chunky big kids, we mm -hmm. all fell in love with basketball, mm -hmm. you know, um, trying, to, trying to post people up and mm -hmm. spin off and tap. We couldn't dump, bro. I didn't have a leaping ability, so y'all spin off and try <laughs> to hand tap with somebody under the, right, right. Under the basket. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, man, basketball, I think basketball was my first love early, mm -hmm. early. Um, my dad used to teach us how to shoot free throws and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I'm gonna dive into some of your numerous mm -hmm. stories, man. Mm -hmm. Like, tell me, I want to hear some stories about like practice or like open gyms where who might have came up and killed you one time. Oh man, <laughs> um, uh, Chanel, you just had Chanel in here last interview, and um, he was a bulldog. Like I, I actually knew Tony before I knew anybody else at Newman. Um, Tony was might have been in like fifth and sixth grade, and I was in like seventh. Right. Playing with the Raiders out of Chester, a Reebok team, and I, Tony was the size he was when he got to high school. Then he was that big. Yeah, that, he was still the number one player. He was the best everything. Like, and I remember him from back then. He was, he was, he was nice. He was a, his, his mentality and how he played the game is what set him apart. You know what I'm saying? Junkyard dog, all in this six foot two, six three guard. You know right. what I'm saying? If Tony played football, he'd be a middle linebacker. That's the type of mindset he got. Wow. But um, so I man, there've been plenty of times where pff, Earl, I know you know Earl. Earl used to give me headaches. Like Earl used to destroy me in practice, dog. Like he had he too much polish. He had too much game. He was too too strong. I was skinny, you know, whatever. But it used to be times where like I had my days. I get at him and. You know, we get to, you know, cursing at each other, Coach Carl hyping us up, and, you know, we would split the starting fives up. So it would be like me, DJ, and me, DJ, Scooter, Tony, and, I don't know, Wally against Scoop, Earl, Rick, and, you know, who met Rashad and somebody else. Right. And we would play like that, and that, I think that is why we were able to be so good, because we were never technically on the same teams in practice. Like, even before then, like when I, Scoop, Scoop, Scoop is probably the most polished high school player, middle school and high school player I've ever seen. And then, I might, this might be not biased, but other people might think differently, but then right after Scoop, with how, with like having a package, like a game, mm -hmm. LeMond Fulton is right behind you. Like polish wise. Like, look, I went and watched Min Min play at St. Thomas, that middle school right there on 16th Street. Mm -hmm. I went and watched him play when he was in seventh, seventh grade, I think. It was like I was watching like Chris Paul. He 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 was smaller than everybody. He wasn't faster than nobody. And this is Scoop and Lamin. It was the same. Scoop was just a little taller. Both of these dudes. When I was that age, it was a jump shot, a three, or. A layup, that's it. These boys had two dribble pull-ups. They had turnaround fadeaways. They had spin moves. They had combo moves, then a go-to move, another combo move. Like, I've never seen, Lemin had a floater. Like, Lemin was shooting floaters over the taller kids. Like, it was nothing. Like, and I'm just like, yo, I, I've never seen nobody. Even LeBron in high school ain't have a package. He was an athlete. Right. Run, dunk, jump, that's it. These boys had packages. Like, I watched Scoop when he was 15 years old steal a ball from Speedy Claxton two times in a row when Speedy was the Sixers point guard. Yeah? Nobody nobody know that, but I, I, I was in the gym when John Harnett was still alive and they had the workouts. And um, we might have been at Pecom on City Line Avenue. Okay. And um, I remember Speedy, you know, in the little drills they were doing. I was too young. I couldn't get on the court yet. So I had to sit and watch with Coach Aaron. But Scoop was, Scoop was like in 10th grade and he could play. 
And I remember Speedy coming down because Speedy was being talked about. You know, you know, they was trying to fill that, not that AI void, but just get another high flying guard in Philly. Right. And Speedy was supposed to be that bull. And they were saying Speedy never got the ball took none of that. And I watched Scoop pick him twice. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it was the the the, the gym. The gym was crazy, and the and the, the the just the competition within us was was, was wild. Like, who's some of the guys that would come back for them open gyms? Like, cause you know everybody, you know it's a factory down there, man. Y'all mm -hmm. putting out D1 ballers all the time. Like, who's some of the guys that would come back and who with y'all? Um, from Newman or just in general? Because, I mean, I guess both, cause that's interesting. You know, that'd be interesting. I mean, from Newman, you get guys all the way from Cantrell. Um, I think Cantrell last name is Fletcher. Um or Thomas, one of them. He's older guard. He was, did, and we talking back when Newman was up 26th Street. Right. And you, you get Kentrell, you get uh, Tad will come back. You know Tad, uh, Richard Cunningham. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Um, Dave Burton. Much as we bumped heads in, in school, but he had a lot to do with me maturing too. Dave was another dude that I think was, uh, he was underappreciated. He was he was really good. He he could it, he's another dude that could do everything at his size. He could shoot, could dribble, pass, do everything. I seen Dave guard people. He had no business in winning the game for us with how he played with his heart, that South Philly heart. You know right. what I'm saying? And, and he he's the epitome of it. Ain't scared of nothing. And for that, I respect him. Like he, you know, you can't take that away from somebody who bring that to a game. Yeah. But um, psh, I mean. Who doesn't come back? The Del Bracco, uh, uh, Coach Mark Del Bracco's younger brother Chris always will come back. You get a lot of guys, and then we'll we'll have pickup nights where it'd be our whole team, other Philly high school guys that were real big like Nori Lindsay, um, who else? Um, pretty much anybody that can hoop you can think of will come in. Evan Turner even came a couple times. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. So it, it'd be. You get the guys in there, it'd be good. It'd be then there a D one D one basketball that's game. It, literally. That's crazy, that's man. It. Um just talk a little bit about just the prestige of Newman, you know, like mm -hmm. I said, I always call it a basketball factory, but like what does that mean to you? Um I mean it's it's to me it's dope that you coming from a, like a almost like a bloodline of good basketball. Right. And that's pretty cool to be a part of that, you know, that fraternity. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, we human beings, you know, every every human being wants to be or affiliated with something. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how and why we feel like we function and wake up every morning, to be a part of something. So to be a part of that and associated with that is big because that legacy and that, that Newman name is going to keep going. And winning, you can never erase. Nobody forgets that. But, you know, the and that's when, when we first started, we kind of, I said it would be interesting about, like, accolades. Yeah, I I was like, self accolades never mattered to me, and I mean that wholeheartedly about everything. Right. And um, the Newman tradition fit that mindset I had to an extent, and that's and and, and that helped. So that's why it's always good and proud to be part of that line of ballers. Right, man. Tell me a little bit about Coach Carl, man. Tell me, tell me some, tell me some stuff about Coach Carl, man. That you know, a lot of people don't know on the surface. You know, maybe a personal experience you might have had with him through the years you played for him. Man. Um, he great, man. He coach, co yo, he Coach Carl is Coach Calipari at the high school level. That's that's the the mentality, the way he talks, his mannerisms, how he thinks the game of basketball, and it's the positions he puts you in to be successful that him and Cal have. You know, Cal might have a guy that is not the most skilled, but you won't be able to tell right. because he set it up that way. Coach Carl is, 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 is that kind of guy. Um, he's a big, he's Italian, so he's a big family dude. I remember always going to go over there and eat a chicken cutlet with him and his wife. And um, man, everybody borrowed money from Coach Carl. So, you know, he was the, you know, <laughs> Cash cow for us. <laughs> coach, give me a dub, coach. I mean, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, but um, yeah, Coach Carl was good, man. Um, he preached family. You know what I'm saying? Typical, typical things kids that age need to hear in order to be successful at anything, not just sports, but even in school or whatever you're trying to do with people. Family, and if you can do shit together, you'll be all right. 
and he, and he was big on that. You said he hid, basically he hid people's weaknesses. Yeah. Um, give me an example of somebody he, he, he kind of hid, you know, maybe me. with him. Me. Um, okay. In high school, I was, I was, like I said, I was 6'5 when I got there, so we assumed I'd be 6'9. But I stopped growing at 6'5, and I remember after the eighth, like, like, eighth grade summer when I, me and Aaron and Scoop was gym rat in that whole summer and Aaron would always be like you're not doing no big man drills no athletic drills you're doing all skill drills and that's when I realized yo okay yo you even if you was six eight six nine or whatever just the height you gonna be and you're you're a guard so you need guard skills you need to think like a guard not like a power forward anymore but my sophomore year after we won that first championship mm -hmm. the first year of the merge when we was freshmen yeah. we beat St. Joe Prep at LaSalle. Right. And was it the prep? Yeah, it was the prep. We mm -hmm. beat the prep. And um Dave Burton was the power was the was that guy. He was the senior. I was taking his spot next year. When sophomore year came, I wasn't as big as strong as Dave. I didn't have the reps Dave had. Dave was three years in, two hundred thirty pounds, six five solid. I'm six five, hundred and sixties eight pounds soaking wet right. and it hasn't played a real physical varsity basketball game in the Catholic League. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's like, you know, a, a tackle that's been playing for nine years and pulling for nine years than some rookie from somewhere just Yeah, put him there. Yeah, so now I'm like, all right, we losing games, we dropping games and offensively I didn't have a package. I was talking about skill. I was learning it. Coach Carl made a system where I can hide it. He, you know, I can hide that if they they, they can't get up on Maul because Maul really can't dribble that well. He can't create his own shot, but he could jump and he could shoot. So he put me in positions to jump and shoot. And as time came on, I learned and learned and learned. So he he hit me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's good. That's a good ball coach, man. Yeah. Um, you know, tell me about growing up, man. You said you was born in Norristown. You moved mm -hmm. to uh, South Philly. Just mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about your life growing up. Um. You know, I'm the oldest of five. Okay. Um, I got two twin sisters, um, a younger, like an Irish twin sister behind them. They, ain't, I don't think they're a year apart. And then a little brother, um, single. You know, and I say it so nonchalant because usually, um, you know, think well, condition wise, it's the norm for us now. Right. You know, the the, the single parent homes, somebody gonna be at. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you know. Um, Single parent. Um, Narstown was cool. I always, always let it be known that you know that's where I'm from. I'm proud to be from there, by way of South Philly. Right. So you know what I'm saying. I've been, and I've been there since. So it's it's funny because I know um, it's probably people in South Philly who don't know I was born in Narstown. Right. So um, yeah, growing, coming up was was cool. It, I can't say I didn't have everything. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't, I didn't have like, you know, all the cool toys and all of that, the clothes, but it was fun. I had my family. My mom did an unbelievable job of handling five kids, technically by herself. Um, she was definitely, uh, she's, uh, she's, she's my inspiration on, you know, not being mediocre. And, uh, or at least in my head, not being mediocre, so. You know, my mom, um, cool story with her and why, like, basketball is is what it is for me. When I was, like, 11, I had a pal game up Oak Street in Norristown, and um, it was the, the suitcase Jordans that came out, the, um, number 18, I think, or something like that. I forget, I don't know the number, but they had the, like, the, the it was the first $185 pair of Jordans. Right. So long story short, I asked my mom, could I have them? And she was like, you know, I don't know. They had a money mall, you know, you can't get them. I, I'm wearing a size 12 by then. So, you know, I'm like, all right, well, cool. Don't worry about it, mom. It's all right. You know, the game came and uh, we warming up and the whistle blew like two minutes before you, you know, you go out on the court and I'm running to go back into the coach. Um, and my mom pulled up, it was, out, it was outside. So my mom pulled up and she had the suitcase in her hand. You know what I'm saying? So I, she waved me over. I go over there, you know, she give me the sneakers. And I'm just like, damn, mom, you really bought them? I, I, I couldn't get them. Right. I laced them up, had the game of my life. Like, we beat a team, had we beat a team. Maurice Ramsey, he's a, a good friend of mine from high school up there. It was a monster. 
like was a monster. There's so many dudes in Narstown that could play that I think like that I was like, yo, they they nice. Like they always thought I was, but I thought highly of them too. But um had the game of my life. We get home, all our lights out. Wow. You know what I'm saying? She gave the electric money up to buy me these sneakers. We light in the crib up with candles. And I I always tell tell people that because that some people try to tell family members or whomever that they need support and they don't know how. And we get caught up thinking support is money. Like here, all right, you need money here, take this, take this, take this. Sometimes it's gestures like that. Even as a kid, even as a kid, I was able to understand that, yo, she'll do anything for me to be okay. Right. So that is support. Like I know like, damn, she, she we, we eating in the dark because she made sure I was able to do what I wanted to do. And if you're not passionate about whatever it is you're passionate about and people aren't doing, making gestures like that, then you gotta reevaluate yourself. So my mom is heavy. No, I think we all have, you know, you know, a lot of us have that strong mom behind us and seeing them do stuff like that. It's important, man. I think it kind of put a, like you said, it, it inspires you. You know, I would say it put a battery in the back, you mm -hmm. know, it charged you up to go out there and do things and make the best of yourself because mm -hmm. you coming from that at home. Mm -hmm. You ain't watch that in a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, that's in a household with you, that mentality, you know, so. Um, you, you were talking about a lot of sports, man, but what's your real first introduction to sports? My first one? Um, I, I remember my mom got a picture. I was like two or three, you know, like no lie, no exaggeration. I know guys tend to exaggerate a lot. I, I don't. I was might have been three years old, two and a half, about to turn three, in the gallery. And I had like a Jamaican outfit on, you know, the, the shorts and shirt with all the holes in it. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I had an island two-piece on with the... Uh, Bugs Bunny 8s, the Jordan 8s with the straps. Right. No lie, I, I remember falling out on the gallery floor because my mom wouldn't let me take this ball out of a store. So I fell out crying, you know, she yelling at me, get out of the kick your ass, you know. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I fi finally she buys, my aunt, my aunt Lavinia, her sister buys the ball. And um, I had the ball and I was patting it between my legs. Ironically, I grew up with no game, but <laughs> but I was, you know what I'm saying, I was patting it, and I, my mom and them got pictures of it, right. pictures of it, two, three years old. I can't even get my son to run straight at three. I was patting it, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, my dad is five foot seven. I'm six five. I was meant to do something, right. you know what I'm saying? And, and that, right then and there, I knew I wanted to be an athlete, and then the introduction, I watched Michael Jordan in 1996 in the finals. I was six years old on Moore Street in Norristown around back, and I looked over at my Uncle Ron like, yo, who who is number 23? And, and my Uncle Ron had on like a leather jacket, looked like looking like Cisco, yeah, like red hair. He got up and, went, and picked up a ball, started doing all these jab steps, and he was like, that's Michael Jordan. And then I remember I sat back, I was like, I want to do what he do, and I was six. Right. And because I was going to Paul Fly, and uh, that's when it that's when it took off. Then I started growing. I started seeing I was bigger than everybody, and, and that's when I fell in love. That was my first sports encounter. Yeah, that's super dope, man. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want fast forward. Is there anything you want to talk about between um, you know them years before you get to high school? Because I want to definitely dive into the new years. Yeah. Um. Uh, I think I think being the best, be, being the like best kid from my area at the time, was cool. But then I got my first taste coming into the city when okay. I was like ten or eleven, and I, cause I used to be kind of self conscious. I was bigger than everybody, so I used to kind of like, you know, damn, is it any other tall kids that's my size anywhere? And came to the city, and seen bulls bigger than me, and it, I, I I felt at home. I was like, that's when I knew I was competitive, cause. Right. The, the group, when we first got out of the city, like dudes that was real good in Narstown left the city and they was shook. Came down here and seen boys that was just as good as them and kind of like shied away from it. And I'll, I'll never forget it. We lost all weekend so bad and I was so pissed. But 
everybody in the city was like, yo, it's some boy from in the county that's real nice, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's how me and Scoop met. I met him playing. He walked up to me, you know, he, he, he killing us. He, yo, let's go at it, me and you. Let's go on, go at each other. So we started getting at it, whatever the game going on. They killing us. They just too good. And all my teammates was kind of shying away, yeah, scared. Scared, yeah. And, um, you know, I liked it. I'm like, I'm with it. After the game, you know, mid-game, we on the foul, and he asked me how old I was, and he was like, you know, I told him, I was like, I'm 12. I'm like, what? <laughs> you how old? And I'm like, 12. He's like, yo, Aaron. He turned me to their coach. and was like, yo, he playing with us. He only 12. They only 12. And after the game, man, we was talking. He, man, you coming to live with me and my grandma. You coming here. You staying here. You, me and you going to be the... And, and that's... And that's and that he, that's my brother. So, hold on. That, that's a, You went to that little fast. Yeah. So, from that, from that, is that like AAU or something? Or? Yep, it was the Ballhawks playing against Norristown Knights. I was 12. Scoop was maybe 14. It was an eighth grade tournament. We played up. But we were so big, everybody thought we was 14, 15 years old. Yeah. We was only 12. Right. And um, I, we, we was playing. At, at this point in time, Rick was only an inch taller than me. And when he grew, huh? He grew, yeah. That's how crazy it was. Me and Rick was only like, like that. But DJ was a freak. Oh yeah. DJ was a freak. Oh like, yeah. Oh yeah. DJ was doing stuff that, like, like I could dunk back then. Like I could do all this stuff, but I never seen somebody do it the way DJ did. With like, DJ was Westbrook before we knew who Westbrook was. Yeah. Because he was so strong and fast and, and just, explosive. Man, when well, I seen DJ, I'm, DJ used to. DJ is the. DJ blocked more of my dunks than anybody in my career playing basketball. Like, no lie. Like in practice and like stuff? DJ, DJ will block. I would try to dunk on DJ almost one, two times a day. He will block him. Block him. I got him one good time, real good. Real good. And I forget he had, he might have blocked me and told me like, man, you ass, like stood over me or something. And the next chance I got, I think I, I got him real good. Like, I jumped and kind of, like, grabbed his face and <laughs> dunked it. But it was by accident. I didn't purposely do it. But I just remember I did feel him. And, and, and he asked somebody, like, yo, did, did he dunk that? <laughs> but the whole gym going crazy. Like, everybody in the gym, yo, everybody in the gym going crazy. And that's the only time I ever dunked on him. He blocked my shot. Not my shot, my dunks. Like, probably 100 to 1. But, yeah, like, so me and Scoop, um, from then, the game ended. We in the handshake line. He like, yo, you coming to live with me. I'm looking like, what? Man, I don't even know you. Like, so is that really what ended up happening? That is what happened. All right, so you went and stayed with his folks. So this is what happened. I, I um, From then on, they got my they got my number. We exchanged numbers. They, Scoop was calling me like, yo, like, he... He he has an impact and had he impacted my life so much because we probably wouldn't be here if I hadn't met him. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have went to I went to Norristown High. I wouldn't have went to Newman. I wouldn't have known nothing about Newman. You know what I'm saying? So he he kinda sped up and put me he opened up avenues that I I wasn't expecting. I knew I loved ball and just wanted to play. And he he was the reason I'm here. So um, after the game, he was calling me. He was, yo, we in the gym. We doing this. What you doing? What you doing? Come down here. Come down here. And I would get, and I would get down there. I'd be down there with him, and I learned what it was to really like have a game. Like Rick, Scoop, Earl, um, Darrell, uh, Hanif, Convict, um, Scooter, any all everybody down there. Like that, that we was taught like in line, like, yo, be for each other, and nobody be, could be what we could be. Right. And that's where it stemmed that I, you know, moved down there. What was, I gotta ask, so like, sure. you know, you're the oldest, mm -hmm. and, and mom, and this five of y'all, mm -hmm. mom comfortable with you moving down to South Philly? Like, what's them talks like? Man, my mom wasn't comfortable with nothing, but that gesture I told you about them sneakers, she was willing to do whatever it took if I loved it. She was the willing to do whatever I needed or she needed to do to allow me to, to be that. And some, and I think that's what we don't pay attention to. And she did that. 
and not she wasn't taught that because she wasn't brought up like that and I say all the time to my mom when we have conversations like me and you are raised different and she sometimes she has trouble understanding it because I'm her son but I'm like yo think about that pop pop and me mom that's my grandma and grandpa mm -hmm. did not raise you the way you raised me yeah. so me and you have different issues we have different characteristics mm -hmm. stuff that you're not confident about I am confident about because your mom didn't help you in a certain way that you helped me in a certain way so I don't know how you feel about that but I know how I feel about it yeah. and that that in itself is overlooked it's a part of parenting so man them talks about moving and, and, and being away from my family man absolutely I couldn't imagine I'm thinking about my son and if I had to do that I'd be uh, yeah. but she did it so it, 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 it seemed like it worked out. Yeah, right? absolutely. Uh, so going, so going to Newman. Mm -hmm. um, how was freshman year? Freshman year was different. Um, I was coming from the county, I was a county boy, and then coming into the city. Now you are, you know, you hear your stories about, you know, the, how city dudes tell oh, the county bulls is this, and then the county, the city bulls is this. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. actually being here, and your identity and where you went to high school at is where you from. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I was in South Philly since. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, and back and forth, obviously from town, but um, South Philly is a part of me. And just having the, man, the relationships I had, the, the family that is now my family, was, you know, more avenues, more ways to, Man, to just be to, to learn stuff from people to get better, and and at the at the end of the day, there was some some feelings I had about my family in Norristown on the strength of you know you know I'm not there, you know I'm missing out on certain things yeah. like you know it would have been cool to do everything I did, you know at Newman in Norristown where you know because everybody you want to do it where you from. I had childhood friends I grew up with that you know our relationships changed just simply because we weren't together as much. Right. I mean, not not no no bad blood, but um, but it was it was um. In your first year, in your first year was the first year between like Newman and Garetti coming yep, together. Yeah, the merge. So, first year to merge. And, yep. and I guess you don't have nothing to compare that to. I wasn't going to Newman if it was all boys. <laughs> I, I'm gonna say that. I, I I said that I had to go to school where there was girls. I was young, but I I, I said to my mom, I ain't going there because I think Roman, Roman and St. Joe's Prep had asked me to go there, and I was like. Definitely not going. Neither one. They don't have girls in school. So. Right. But Newman, you know, the merge that just set it off. And uh, but yeah, first year to merge. Yeah. So uh, how did y'all perform on you know, yeah, uh, freshman year? Uh, how did that year end? We won the championship that year. It was a rough year for me because I was going from playing and being the guy. Not not and not. Don't get me wrong. Not saying the guy. It like. You know, it was my team, but being the guy everyone looked to the most, playing the most minutes to not playing at all. Mm. So I didn't know how to like just sit, like practice. You know, you do you doing all right, but then but I can also say I honestly wasn't ready. It wasn't ready. I, my body wasn't ready. I, I was playing behind Dave Burton, so. I could not feel his shoes within a year and at the time I, I I wasn't ready but I remember one game I did get in against St. Joe's Prep I was guarding Reggie Redden on offense <laughs> just to show you like where my head was at you know what I'm saying so it's like um, freshman year yeah yeah we on offense and I'm playing defense on Reggie they, we still laugh at that story to this day like all of us Wait, like, the stage is too big bro no not, not the stage I just physically and like it's weird because high school and my college career are parallel. The same way, happen the same way. I'm one of them dudes where in my head, if I got it this way and I prepare and I do everything I need to do to, to, to get to that point in my head I see, but something outside of that happens, it throws me all off. Mm. Like, for example, Scoop, pitch to pitch. Yo, come here. It's going to be me and you. We're going to be one and the two. We're going to be this and that. And it eventually did be that. It was that the right. next three years. But 
in my head, I was ready. I, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going from a D guy to not even playing, like the last guy. So I couldn't adjust to it. So it knocked me off my track. Like, all right, well, I ain't playing, so. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people, you know, as athletes, you don't ever plan to not play. You know, like how to handle that mentally. You know, mm-hmm. like we go through that a lot in football. Cause mm-hmm. you know, like, um, like I coached and I played, so I can tell you, like, we run in this particular play for this running back. Mm-hmm. If something happened with that running back, that guy behind him really may not know what's going on. What's up? Right. You know, he, he. We how many times I, I done call plays for guys, and they done messed them up because they mm-hmm. don't get the reps or they not paying attention Absolutely. or. You know, like when we got to college, a lot of us redshirted. You know, that's probably the most year that all of us got in trouble the most, mm-hmm. grade slack the most. Mm-hmm. It just knocked you off. You know, you're not ready to just not play. It's been a part of your life for mm-hmm. a long time. Absolutely. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, so, y'all won the Catholic League, you know, your freshman year. Mm-hmm. So, your sophomore year, this is when I transferred to Newman, so mm-hmm. I got to see you then. Mm-hmm. So, Tell me about sophomore year. Sophomore year was now okay. I got I, to me. I put a, I put some pressure on myself because Dave is leaving. We won a championship, so our core now is the four plus me, minus Dave. So now, if anything go wrong, it's definitely my fault. So we're talking. We're talking Rick Scoop. Rick Scoop, Earl, DJ, me. Okay, that's a crazy five. That's oh a, that's God. that's the that's the best five in the city ever. That's the craziest five. <laughs> that's, that's the craziest. The best. Five. That's the best. That's the best five in the city ever. So how do, how does how does that year go? It goes really well. It goes great. Um, it had its ups and downs for me, but that's where Scoop was um, major at preaching for the team, like. For us, cause like when it, cause me and him was alone the most together, so I kind of was, you know, he was. I wanted to be just like him. Like I thought everybody loved him, everybody liked him, you know, everybody thought he was, he was charismatic. You know what I'm saying? So I, I'm like, why wouldn't I want to be like this guy? Everybody likes this guy. He's a good guy, you know. He's not an asshole. He's a good dude. I want to be like that. And. He always would say, yo, me and you, me and you, or, or or if he was talking with other people, us. It was always a, us. It was never just him. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that, I took that, like, okay. Because even though I ain't play freshman year, even though sophomore year was in the beginning, was a, uh, we won both years. That's the goal, to win. That was my only goal, to win. Right. And we did that. So I'm like, well, I got to buy in. Dave bought in. Dave could have been a nut and shot every shot his senior year and ran it the way he wanted, but he sacrificed so much so we could be successful. I for for that I always respect you. Right. That's that's reputable stuff. That's man stuff. So I, I like that. And sophomore year was that. I sacrificed a lot. Like like granted I, I wanted to I was ranked real high in eighth grade. I was like top fifty. I might have been like thirty eight I think. Mm-hmm. And what hurt me was I was seeing where AAU was going and I was ranked in the top. When you 38 in the country in football or basketball, you're going to one of the top schools, period, right? right. So my freshman year, all them dudes that was in front of me went to, the, went to high school and started varsity. When I went to high school, I ain't play at all. So you know what that did to my ranking? It dropped me. Yeah, yeah. Now, going into 10th grade, I'm back. 120, you know what I'm saying? All because I wasn't, I didn't get to play. So sophomore year, I had the pressure of, I still wanted to be the best. I still want to be good. I want to show the game I've been working on and who I am, but I can't do that because I got Scoop, who's better than me, Rick, who's better than me, Earl, who's better than me, DJ, who's better than me. All of them dudes in this day show. Mm. So I'm in the, like, you just have this, um, you know, dudes have to find buckets and I'm gonna contribute in this space of, hey, I'm not getting the play call mm-hmm. for me. I'm not getting this shot. Mm-hmm. You know, you gotta find a way to contribute, mm-hmm. whether you gotta lock somebody down or something. Was, mm-hmm. was they were some of your tasks? I, I was the guy. I was the defensive guy. And his, the, but this is why Newman was special. Even though that was my role, if there was a dude or if there was a night that, because all of them got theirs, whenever they wanted, they could get whenever they wanted. They would start, hear them all, go ahead, you know, especially Scoop and DJ. Hear them all, go ahead, go ahead, 
Rick, Rick, honestly, all of them, actually, all of them. Yo, here, 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 you know what I'm saying? And I would admire them because they all had, like, game. Yeah. So it, it made me get game. Like, I got to be like that because now I'm the guy. I'm always the X Factor. Everybody know they all going to score 20. Now I got to show that I can get 20. And it went like that because <laughs> that's why we were so good. Right. Was, all five of us was capable of scoring 20. But half in the sacrifice meant. You know, I, I, I got to give it up. Not not I have to give it up, but that's the winning play. And and I love y'all too much to not win and to be put a self-accolade over us. And that was the culture of us. That year, I feel like it was so many lobs thrown. Like, mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like one of my first like real experiences mm -hmm. like what high school basketball is supposed to look like mm -hmm. between you and DJ mm -hmm. and Rick. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, the, above the rim for real it was vicious <laughs> in high school though. Like, like I feel like we was that. You see how you look on Instagram now. You see all these high school kids like with all like got like five superstars and all these dunks. Like, I like the what's the Lamelo Ball boy uh -huh. and all that. That was us. Yeah, no doubt. We was we was you know what I'm saying. And it's cool though because I can honestly say like, there's a dude on our on that team that ain't even play. That was. Better than me at the time too. Wally Hepburn. Yeah. Walking bucket. Yeah. Did not play. Walking bucket. So you This know, story probably crazy, bro. His story probably bro, super crazy. You wanna know it? so here's a fun fact. <laughs> Go ahead. I have never scored a thousand points on no level. Okay. I have never made first team all anything at any level. I've never made I've made second team before, but I've never made first team. I've never scored a thousand points. I've never um there's another one there. Like I have no basketball records broken. Like you know how dudes when you see me you got a damn mall. I was the what I was like the number three player in the city senior year. Or number four, if one of them. Um but I've never been like, you know, you feel like damn mall was the number one this, number one that I was never none of that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And you would think that when you saw me play. I was never none of that. The cool part about not having none of that is the sacrifice that I was willing to be like, you know what, all right, it's for us. Whatever team or whoever I was playing with, it's for us. Because my ultimate goal is just to win. So later on, that's when I started to think about it, when I seen like how basketball, what it was turning into. It's just like, but... Newman's five, that five, and them lobs, and at that age, like I remember going into West Catholic, and I think they we threw a couple lobs, and it was just like they was running all over the place in there, and it's just like, like you know, it became normal yeah. because we were so we were so much bigger than everybody, athletic and everything. So I know it was fun, to, probably fun to watch. No, it was amazing to watch. <laughs> bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, and like, and it's funny to sit here and say like uh, everybody can get twenty. Mm -hmm. No, legit, everybody can get literally, twenty, literally. and. You know, as I you know, as I try to interview all of y'all, because mm -hmm. like all of y'all have interesting stories, and to see where y'all went, to me that was like my first time seeing mm -hmm. that up close. Like some of them coaches that came to watch y'all, mm -hmm. uh, Behan mm -hmm. and Jay Wright mm -hmm. in the gyms. Like mm -hmm. I never seen that before. Right. You know, and, that's, and I'm just sitting there as a kid trying to get the college playing football. Hopefully, yeah, you yeah. know. But at these basketball games, mm -hmm. Lob City for real, mm -hmm. and all these like big time coaches is in there, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was dope, man. It definitely was dope. So, like, going into junior year, I guess, um, what, what happens on junior year? Because this, uh, this will be post-Scoop and Rick. Mm -hmm. so, so, junior year is not nah, no, actually. No, 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 no. This is uh, the Roman year. Uh, the year we lost. Yeah. In the chip. There you go. So, um, junior year was, was, was real. Was the junior year was good because I was the X Factor for sure. Like... Whenever we played, we played, um, we beat the number three team in the country that year. Who, who, what school was that? The Matha. Okay. They had uh, Austin Freeman, uh, Jare Grant, Jeff Peterson. Um, they had some bull that played wide receiver. He, he wound up going to like UConn or somewhere, somewhere up northeast playing football. But they, they were they were the number three team in the country, um, and we. We beat them, and uh, I think it put us at like number five or something like that. I forget, but that year we beat them. Um, that was one of my best games. Like anytime we wasn't playing in the city, I had 20, 25 plus points. What, what, and what's that? What? 
how does that happen? This is the crazy part. So senior year, Rick and Scoop is already signed, committed. They kind of just, you know, now we playing for the chip. They coasting. They senior years love for them. They was getting the attention on the court, and you know who's now also getting attention? Tony Chanel. Okay. So I'm the guy that is. Yeah, we all. It's like, yeah, the young boy Chanel. We can't wait to see him. Scoop and Rick senior year, we can't wait to see them. But then it's this other young boy they got that's still there. He liked that. They gonna be nice. So that's how you kind of would put the team together if you was talking about it. Yeah. I was the guy like, that's the other boy. Let's see what he'll do, like how it'll look. And it was love because everybody prepared for Rick, Tony, and Scoop. You know what that left me? A cakewalk to a dub. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Y'all doubling Rick, chasing Scoop all the way up half court. And y'all doing whatever y'all is to keep Tony from playing. And Tony battling himself because he's a freshman. So Tony is in a whole nother field. Them two are being hounded. This, this Who the other member of that starting five? Rashad Savage. There you go. Mm -hmm. And he's from? Rashad is actually, so he's actually really my cousin. Okay. Um, right, he, right. He's, yeah, he's my real life cousin. He's from uh, Pottstown. Okay. But he's from Narstown, like me, but he moved to Pottstown. But yeah. And Shad, yeah. So, man, wait, I wonder what he doing now too. That's another one. Shad, that's, that's another one yeah, that I just ain't. Yeah. I ain't heard that name in a long time. Yeah, he doing good though. He doing good being a father, man. He uh, still look good, body right. He doing. He all right, man. Yeah. So, all right. so that that year, you said y'all beat the number three team in the uh, mm -hmm. number three team in the country. Y'all become number five. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. How did you do on the floor? You know that that whole season before we get to that room and Roman shit. I was balling. We were balling. We had the ups and downs. Um, we had the ups and downs. It was the, this was the year after the fight in the championship from sophomore year. Oh yeah. So what's your memories from that fight? Uh, <laughs> I just remember. <laughs> what's your memories from that fight, man? I just remember. So I'm I'm standing under the basket, like like. Off to the side, like in the waiting in the corner, just in case DJ drive and kick it. I shoot the last shot, so I'm waiting. DJ got Will or Wes Kirkland, one of them twins is out top. They switched. Something happened. We ran a pick and roll, and I just remember Brad Wanamaker like, "Damn, we shouldn't have switched." But Will or Wes Kirkland is up there. I don't know which one of them, but DJ putting it between his legs, putting it between his legs. We look up at the clock, it's two seconds. He between his legs and like an AI. Mm. Between the legs, AI, and um, went up and hit that. And I, and I ran in just in case it came out. Cash game. Mm. <laughs> so, and then it didn't went crazy. So, we, so we, when DJ hit the shot, him and Scoop ran straight across half court, like to the Roman side. So, we Initially, we chasing DJ because you hit the shot. We all end up in front of Roman's crowd, and we like start you know start grabbing the jerseys. Ah, Roman, whatever. Next thing you know, a bottle came down. Psh. Then another bottle came down. Another bottle. Now, when we when D hit the shot, we ran on the court, and now our Newman crowd ran on the court. So we, the whole section, and then everybody underneath on this side and around in front of the doors. So we now the whole Newman crowd's on the court. So it's the players plus fans. Now when the bottles and stuff, now it's they coming from everywhere. Once the bottles started hitting the fans, the fans started throwing back. So now it's and then from there, you know, cops involved, and you know we grabbing, yo, get off of him, get off of him. And it was now I know they they was just like next year, junior year, the first game Roman Newman, there was no people, no fans. What was that like? It was um. It was cool. It was cool because it was straight gritty basketball. Like the nobody probably, was there. Probably reminded you of like a practice. Yeah, no, like it was. It was. It was. Um, because I remember the parking lot was full. It was TV camp. The game was televised. Televised with no people there. With no people there. That's so people crazy. could see it. So it was televised. They had it on the radio, I think, because it was cameras all along the side where we used to have the Saints, the drum, the yeah. score table. It was cameras all right there, and. Um, we played that game. I actually had a Bradley Wanamaker was probably one of the I had the hardest guard in uh, all all my years of playing. Guarding it's probably Bradley and then I can't like really put together like what his game is like to describe it. Like describe his game. 
Cause I told us he ain't he about your height, ain't it? A little smaller than me. I'm six five, Brad I'd be like six three, six mm -hmm. four, something like that. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to think. Who is Bradley Wanamaker? Somebody, cause Bradley Wanamaker is Bradley Wanamaker. I don't think there's nobody with a game like his, but I'm I'm gonna try to see if I can put somebody like, cause he's not blazing fast. He can't really shoot, but he can make shots, and he's crafty, and he's. Unbelievably strong with his shoulders, so I would have two fouls every Roman game in the first quarter because he just put me on his hip, get some, get me to the basket, and then just boom, lean on me, and I foul on me. Boom, I got one. Two minutes later, I got two. I'm sitting down. So Roman go up. Now we playing catch up, and that's literally how every Roman game went junior year. I get two quick ones, two quick ones. But the crazy thing was. Scoop was a much better defender than everybody thought. Like, the the knock was, oh, Scoop don't play no D, he can't guard nobody, did whatever. But Scoop was strong. Right. Like, to me, I think Coach Carl should have put Scoop on Brad because they the same age. Scoop got the mental to play because Brad was smarter than me. You okay. know, he, he shot fake. I was young and mm -hmm. Scoop could match him. And I think if Scoop guarded Bradley, and it might sound crazy, if Scoop guarded Bradley, we'd have won. He probably was saving him offensively. But you had Rick, me, Shy, you still had other, Wally, you still had five other options. To me, I think Scoop was the and even if, all right, save him, put, put um, Chenault was the other guard. Take Scoop off, let Scoop be the shooting guard. Scoop stand here and catch and shoot every time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But that, that was just me. I thought Scoop had the right everything he was just as strong as Brad because Scoop, Scoop is another thing like his body you look at him like man but he's strong you know and, and it's funny because you know me and Scoop in the same grade yeah and yeah, I don't, you were a year older than me yeah, yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, Scoop used to uh we used to be English class I mean but I just remember like watching his game like he real polished dude he not really have a real above the game mm -hmm. above the rim game mm -hmm. he can shoot he can pass he had right. great handle mm -hmm. um I, I hate. I would hate to say like he's not super athletic. So like, no, he he, he not. He, Scoop can't jump over a piece of paper. <laughs> but with his with the tools he got, he don't have to. Scoop one of them boys that could play basketball the rest of his life because of how good he got it. Like mm. I never seen nobody with the skill, the natural skill set. Like I used to. I used to. I hate doing drills with him because he does. And, you know, we haven't done drills together in years, but. He's a machine. There's no move he can't put together. Like, you see all that stuff Kyrie Irving do. Scoop been doing that since I met him. Mm. I'm talking the double whammies, behind the back, behind the back, in and out, crawl, has he, all that, man. He, 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 he got it and had it. And he, when you got that, to, to me, his game, he's Sam Cassell mixed with Andre Miller. Mm. To me, that's... Arguably one of the best guards ever. You mix them two. Andre Miller and Sam Cassell. Bro, and, 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 it, and it's crazy because, like, if you think Andre game. Miller, you be like, yeah, that game is boring, but he's not a play. It's a boring game. He's going to get a bucket, but it's boring looking. Go watch him YouTube him. You, YouTube him and watch him go get 50. Mm. 50. No dunks, no nothing. Just a raw 50, not a bunch of, you know, nowadays these bulls is getting 50. They shooting 15 free throws and, and 11 threes. A real 50 is all in between game. That's a 50. A Michael Jordan 50. Right. A, 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 a 51 points off of 26 shots. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? A quarterback, his, his rating, he, he, he threw for 1,000, one pick, 13 touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, that's legit. Not, yeah. not, not somebody who turnover rate matching how many touchdowns he got. Now nah, it don't mean nothing. Right. So he. Yeah, he, so you would probably say that uh, Scoop is probably the best, like really the best player you ever played with. You be more descriptive, like uh, when you say because now, are you now because now if you because now you think are you adding a pro level? Mm. Are you adding? Let me know what you add because I guess, it, it gets I guess, interesting. I like, guess I guess until that point. 
All right, so to that point, until college and high school, yeah, he's the best. He's by far the best player I've ever seen and the best player I've played with. Yes, he's the he's he's the, he's the best player. So yeah. so diving back into this, trying to get this Newman part out yeah, the way, you know. Yeah. So so um, this your junior year, and mm -hmm. we're talking about lose. Uh, we end up losing to mm -hmm. Roman and the Chip. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I guess I always had to ask guys like where do recruiting come in, you know, with you ball players? Um when when do the school start chirping and, and, and start hitting you up and coming to see you at AU and at Numa? Mm, seventh grade. When as soon as you can play. Seventh grade? As soon as you can play. Y'all get recruited at seventh grade, man? I, I, I lied to you not. I remember when I first started catching lobs. I was in sixth grade. We was playing up in PW against a, Miguel, a bull named Miguel Boca Chica. If you're from Philly, you know who he is. And if you are age, you know who he is. He's 6'6", six, six, shoot Spanish bull, right? Mm -hmm. Went to Frankfurt, I think he did. Anyway, Miguel's team was playing my team up in PW. We started arguing, got the push and shoving. My mom pulled me over, told me, yo, just chill. Don't be fighting, play the game. Get your head right. Get them back in the game. I'll never forget it. I got the ball baseline, did a jab step. They was in the zone. Jab step went down and took off from the box and dunked it in sixth grade, right? Mm -hmm. Archbishop Carroll, assistant coach, son was on that team. Mm -hmm. Carroll was the first school that was like, and I remember going over after the game to my mom and um, um, I forget how exactly it went, but someone was like, yo, Archbishop, it's, it's some young ball in here in sixth grade, he like 6'4". <laughs> And he just went baseline and dunked on this whole team zone. I don't know who he is, but we got to get him to Carroll. Carroll was the first school mm. that was, that, that I said, I'm like, oh, all right, dad, I didn't know that. So who was like, who would you say the first college coaches, the uh, college schools to, you know, recruit me? Recruit you. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Probably, it's probably uh, when you say recruit, send a letter or offer a scholarship. Mm. What's your definition of recruit? The guy sent a scholarship. Yeah. Because some people just talk the talk, right? Some people, you on the mailing list. Yeah, there you go. Your so, name on the list. So up here, there's the list. Give it to all those kids. Bang. But then when you start getting letters and handwritten, mm -hmm. and they naming you, they saying your name in the letter, now they recruit you. You start seeing them in more than one place. You've seen them every weekend. Yeah. So my, um, John Chaney was the coach at Temple the at Temple. the time. John Chaney was, I was young. Oh, man. I, I remember <laughs> I remember him saying he was at um he would come and see Earl often and I remember Cheney was like uh he looked over at me one time we were doing something and he was like, Oh you won't even get a choice, you just come in the temple, he ain't we ain't gonna ask you. Yeah. And I was just, <laughs> I'm just like, well, oh well, okay. 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 <laughs> but um Temple was probably the first school that recruited me and then after that, um, um I, I, Georgetown recruited me because they thought I was Scoop one day. Um, <laughs> seriously. Come on, man. To be honest, I was in... Um, Come on, yo. That's it was crazy. a team camp. Scoop and Rick had went to Pangos, All-American camp, and I couldn't go. I had to stay because we had a team camp. And um, Coach John didn't want the whole, all our good players to be gone because we were playing a couple good high schools from New York. Then Kimba was there. We played against Kimba and them. Um, Kimba Walker? Yep. Yep. We um, beat them. We used to do Kimball and them. We used to kill him. Kimball wasn't even the best player on his team. It was two other Bulls at the time that was better than him. But Kimball, like, I could see Kimball was going to be the better guard because of everything he had. The other dudes just had the package. Kimball package wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. But Kimball was better than all of them, but at the time, they was the guys. And um, I stayed. Georgetown was there. We... The, to jump ball, I had got the ball, came down, shot a three, made it. They inbound the ball, something happened, we get a turnover. I think it might have been Scooter or somebody throws me the ball, I catch it, dunk it. Mm. They ball come out the net, they pick it up, throw it. Somebody, ball, some ball dribble down. I tap him from behind, they throw it to me, chase him down, pull up a three again. Bang. So that's, what, eight points straight. Mm -hmm. They called a timeout, the Georgetown coach was like, yeah, that is that that scoop Jardine, right? And they they and I was like, uh, I forget. I think it was my mom's, uh, my mom boyfriend at the time. Um, 
And Coach Carl said it. They was like, yo, they think you're a scoop. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, because they were seeing, you know, the best player at Newman. Right. Or the guy, you know, the best guard at Newman. And that they weren't there, so I was looked like I could have been him. So right. they, That's crazy. And I, they found out it wasn't me, but they kept recruiting. They, they actually stayed. They kept recruiting me after that. Like, damn, we thought that was scoop. And, and that's how Georgetown recruited. But um, I had Boston College, Providence, um, Boston College, Providence, uh, it's every school in the city except Villanova. Um, um, Florida State, um, NC State was one, because NC State actually recruited Scoop, me, and Rick. Um, I got a story for you. Oh, yeah? Cool one. So nobody in the city know this. So make sure, make sure you talking to the mic and tell this one. I need this exclusive. No, nobody in the city know this. Do you know who Billy Hines is? Name sound real familiar. Billy Hines is the he's Bob Huggins guy. Okay. Right. Billy Hines used to be the coach of LaSalle when Steve Smith, Gary Neal from the Spurs, okay. they all went to LaSalle and Billy Hines was their coach. Okay. Right. So Billy Hines, they had a rape scandal there that got Billy Hines fired, Steve Smith and all them dudes, you know, whatever, they had a big scandal. So now they got they need a new coach. I was in ninth, eighth, eighth grade going to ninth grade that year when that happened. That's like 03, mm -hmm. 04. Doug Overton, L Train, Lionel Simmons. Okay. And um it's another another old head named Moot. You don't know Moot, but Moot used to coach basketball over in Delaware. Okay. So Aaron, Abbott, our coach, Aaron, yeah. all took us out to eat down South Street. So we down like 4th and South. 4th and South. We was walking, talking. We sit down. Yo, if L Train and uh, Doug Overton get the job, everybody at Newman committing to the South. Now, Scoop, Rick, me, Dave, DJ, Scooter, uh, Shy. Wally. Um, that been a crazy. But hold on. We was beating everybody in the nation, right? Mm -hmm. we, was, we was beating everybody already in high school. Mm -hmm. If all of us went to LaSalle in college, what you think we would have did in college against the same players? They just going to college now. Right. Could you imagine how the city would have been if all nine commits from Newman committed to LaSalle? It'd be our high school team. You think they would allow that? How could they stop it? Come on, you ain't no ain't no college team got nine dudes from the same school. But how could they stop it? We ain't we ain't taking money. Play the scholarships right. Everybody's a year apart. Earl and DJ is 2006. Scoop and Rick is 2007. I'm 2008. Tony Chanel is 2009. Mm. Two scholarships each year to eventually have the same team we once had, the best five in the city, me, Scoop, Rick, DJ, That's been crazy. But I'm not even going to lie. I'm a, I got to add Dave Burton as a part of that five. So it's like six. And I'm the half guy. So it's Rick, Scoop, Rick, Scoop, DJ, Earl, Dave, and I'm point five. Don't, don't sell yourself short. No, nah, I'm man. definitely not selling myself short, but point five because... <laughs> My 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 run started because of a bull that sacrifice. So I gotta give him his credit. Can't no, can't no. not give him his credit. Definitely so. So you lose the Catholic chip. Mm -hmm. Your senior year. So so like listen. This is this is this. Is, <laughs> I need you really to yeah, yeah, break yeah. that break this yeah. down, man. What happened your senior year, man? And I don't want to say it was disappointing, but it's definitely a lower year than um, probably expected, man. You mm -hmm. know, it's your senior year. Would you say that you was the leader? You know, obviously the leader yeah. of the team. And what happened with that I team? Was, I was the leader of the team on the strength of, like, I was the leader on the team when it came to example. Like, I, I'm not the type of dude, like, I don't, I'm, I don't talk much. I'm not going to be like, yeah, we got to do this and we got to do this. I'd rather just show you. Right. And then tell you like, yeah, we yeah, we gonna do this, but I'm gonna do it with you, so you know it's real. I ain't gonna send you out there and make you do something that I wouldn't do. Right. So that's how I lead. And I've been around a lot of men that and I call them cowards. Like, even the way I parent, I'll never tell my son not to do something that I do in my home every day. 
Right. That's you. You starting off a kid with contradiction off the rip. Mm-hmm. I'm. I'm not going to tell my kid what to do either. I'm going to give them options. Because at the end of the day, you're going to choose what you want to do. I just want to guide you the best way to be safe and the best way to do the most you can. So with all of that being said, like, if you want the rah-rah, yeah, this is my shit, this is my team, I'm this and that, I'm not that guy. And I wasn't that. So to others, it'll look like, he don't really care, he's senior year, he out. Mm-hmm. When that wasn't the case, that's just not the way I lead. I'd rather show you. So you can really see, like, man, now nah, I really feel the way because this boy really doing it. So do you think y'all needed that? Did y'all, do you think y'all needed the vocal leader? No. We didn't need a vocal leader, one, because... Talent. Like, when you have talent, you don't really need a vocal leader because y'all know enough about it. Like, I mean, okay, when you, when you, when LeBron went to the Heat and it was him, Wade, and Bosh, there wasn't no vocal leader. They're so good that they can just be like, okay, let's put it this way. What position you played in football? I played offensive line. All right. You you a tackle, I'm a guard, mm-hmm. right? You the best tackle, I'm the best guard. And we both playing on the, our quarterback right-handed, so we playing on the left side. Yeah. So me and you just chopping it up. All right, we about to play against the best. Defensive tackle and DN. And the best DN. Mm-hmm. And now me and you ain't really, come on, you got to get up. You got to, nah, you know how that conversation go? Hey, cuz, just look up for this. He he, he he get his hands on you real quick and try to get you off of him real quick. So he, if he get by you this way, I'm going to be right there. That's how that conversation goes. Yeah. It's not really a vocal leader because y'all both are the best. So w- w- what are you going to say to me that's going to, don't get me wrong, not help me, but get me to play at my best? Because yeah. if I'm already the best at my position, I'm, my level already there. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I think we didn't need a vocal leader. We were talented. We needed we needed a Who's on this team by the way? It's you, Tony. So this and this I say this all the time. This was the worst Newman team in history. Like, it was me, Tony Chenault, Lamin Fault, and Terrell Taylor, Tariq Duran, Daniel Stewart. Scooter was supposed to play but got suspended for the whole year. How did what did he do? Scooter got suspended for... What did Scooter do? I forget. But he got suspended. He didn't play all year. He got suspended. Um, and the rest was... And Rashad transferred. He went to Amotech. So we got it. I forgot about that. So literally, I have a completely different team than our championship last junior year we lost in the chip with, yeah. which was still a good team. Yeah. I have a completely different team. So I had... Scooter getting suspended. I'm 6'5". I was like our next tallest dude. I had to play center. So I guarded, what's his name? A whole game. Renardo Sidney. Whole game. You know what I'm saying? So I'm guarding the centers now. It's Now we, we down a man. Tyreek Byrne ain't even playing. And yeah, he's nice. <laughs> Is he? Is he? And who is not, who's, if, who's playing in front of him, if bro? If I'm not, Terrell Teller. Yeah. If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, Tariq Duran is a record holder in the Big Five tournament. It ain't nothing but NBA players that hold them records. Yeah. And wasn't playing. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that. Yeah. Wait, what was he young? Like a sophomore or nah, something? He was a, he was a sophomore. He should have been on the court. Should have been on the court. We needed him. On the court. And senior year happened. We 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 lost to O'Hara, which I don't think Newman ever lost to O'Hara in history. He was the first team to lose to them. Um but then what also made that year hard was every team started to figure out our players and realize we weren't that good at the time. We didn't have the same talent as we had two years ago. Right. I was getting double. The whole, I couldn't do nothing. I would score a 20, 30, 20 game here, but it was hard. And I played the right way, so I don't force nothing. Double. If Tony had a bad night, we lost. We, we would lose. You know what I'm saying? And we, we lost. We got bumped in the first round of the playoffs to another boy that went to Newman and transferred, Henry Smith, yeah. with the Bonner. With the Bonner, And yeah. Bonner bumped us in the first round. And that was senior year. It was just like, it was there and I'm gone. 
Uh, just just because you just came across a good point, man. Mm-hmm. How many of these dudes, like a Henry, like you know, they say the Morris twins with the Newman. Like, how many? Uh, Ramon Moore with the Newman. All these good, like, like these dudes that transferred, like two stacked. Like I would have never. So at one point, the team was the twins, Rick Scoop. The twins, Rick Scoop, and Ramon Moore. Come on, bro. Come on. I would I wouldn't have played till my eleventh grade year. Mind you, could you imagine everybody that would have been on the bench? The bench is all D1 players, too. Starters. Starters, yeah. The bench. The starters. But that's why you get transferred. That's why you get... A lot of people don't know. Nori Dean Lindsay was about to come to Newman. Raheem Smith went to Newman. Left after like a month. Um, I'm forgetting a couple more. Like, like, dude, like... Yeah. Overload, man. That's, Overload. That's crazy. The practices be the best part, though. That's that's what I be meaning. Like, there's so many dudes we had and how good we were. Practice used to be, like, crazy. It used to be, like, you know, people in the gym at practice, and especially the night practices. Yeah. yeah so, so you in senior year, y'all get bumped in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, why Rhode Island for college? Um, I met a coach. Um, after high school, my goal was I want to play in the NBA. I want to play in the NBA. So I want to go and play at a school that is going to prepare me to be an NBA player. And it didn't have to be after one year, two years. It could be about four years. I just wanted to play in the NBA once I left school. Okay. So my how I was looking at coaches was how can you help me become an NBA guard? And if you can do that, I will commit to whatever school. And this coach... Um, came to me, he said, yo, you're an NBA player. You got an NBA body, you got M- you got the tools to that. If you learn a few things, if you get this down pack, if you get this and you add this, tweak this, you could be an NBA guard, like a legitimate guard. I'm like, all right, I want to be that. Do you, you know, do you trust me to help you be? Yeah. All right. And he was, a, he was the assistant coach at Rhode Island at the time. And um, I... Um, I got there, and then he got a new job at Providence. Didn't even tell me yet. Mm. He walked in the, I think he walked in the gym. We was working out, and then he told us he broke us there. But I should have came, I should have came out of commitment when that happened, because I didn't have the coach on the staff that would fight for me. Right. You know how everybody, you know, you coach, you came in with Coach Joe Schmo. Mm-hmm. But he got you back. He the new lineman coach, and you came in with him. So my guy always gets the first rep, then the rest of y'all go. Right. I'm always catered to my guy because I brought him here. Right. And I didn't have that off the bat. But I, I stayed with him anyway. And, um, but that, that is why I chose Rhode Island. I chose Rhode Island for a coach that didn't never coach there. Wow. And that and that right there, if I could, if, and I'm, I'm human. Like, I'm not afraid to say, like, I, regret, I got a ton of regrets. I know people be like, I don't got no regrets. I got tons of them, John. That's one of them. I wish, I regret that I didn't back out when he got the new job. But but I don't blame nobody. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, I made the decision. Why not transfer once you got there, though? Like, was that not an option for you? Yeah, so the way the team was set up when I got there, my sophomore year, I could start. I could be, or I could get, I could be in the fight for starting. So when, by this time, I got a little bit of game now. Like I got a, a package, I could play, I got guard skills. So there was one dude, there was, freshman year I wasn't gonna play. Jimmy Barron, the coach's son, and uh, Keith Cothern was the, 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 they was the two lead guards, two guards. Both of them were better than me. And um, so I could, like, I could be like, you know what, I deserve, like, you know, I, I come off the bench. Like, you know, them dudes is, is good. The next year, I should have started with Keith Cotton as the guard, but I didn't. I was still coming out the bench for another guy who was also good, but I think I could have been a little better for us starting or, or just playing more. So, like I said, remember I told you earlier on in the, um, in the shoot, I was saying, like, once the vision ain't the same, I kind of am like, well, now I'm wasting my time because that's what happened sophomore year. Started off, I was the second leading scorer on the team off the bench. I was averaging, I think my first game I had 14. Second game I might against VCU, Larry Sanders, the boy that played with the Timberwolves. Uh-huh. I might have had like a double double that game. 
Yeah. The next Eric Maynard was at the game and everything. I'll never forget it because uh, I had got the ball and Bradford Burgess was guarding me and I and I I hit him with like a like a like a quick move and pull up jump shot and it was like precise real quick. You know how when at the high levels you do stuff real precise and Eric Maynard just was like, damn, that yeah. was some league league shit. Yeah. And I'll never forget that because right after that. I got subbed out, didn't go back in the game because they started playing zone. We lost that game. And I was hot. Mm. Hot. All, and the double, I had a double-double in the first half. And they went zone. And I wasn't the best standstill shooter. But breaking the zone is easy if you, you know, put three guards out there. It was a two-three. Put three guards out there and be aggressive. Attack the top two. I would have, that would have been easier than playing man. And he didn't play. But that's where I needed that coach to right. say, yo, my God, put him in. Yeah. What was the explanation you was getting for, like, you not playing these, these first couple of years? Um, I'm going to be honest. Like, and I haven't, you know, my coach, I think he had a serious mental problem. No joke. I think he was, he was bipolar. There's, there was times where I would ask, you know, coach, why am I not playing? And on my son's life, he could stop breathing right now. My little baby boy, his response was, Oh, yeah, you just, you just got to keep playing hard. I'm just as confused as you is. So now... So you think you got favorites? So, like, like... I don't know. Like, he had to. Because, like I said, it was... I'm looking at it like... I can really help the team win. Like, he would, what would really piss me off is... He used me as an example. But I want to play we in practice, if I said wing right, tackle over I-25, that's the wing, wide receiver on the right, tackle over, tackle's going to pull, it's going to the five, to the left. Yeah. He would not change nothing. Like, no adjustments, no nothing. So, all right, we all know, we, we know exactly what that is. Look how Lou got in there and pulled and did it exactly right. Right. Well, why Lou not playing? You, you you using Lou in the videos and practice, showing how he doing everything you asking, and you yelling at the starters, but you're not playing Lou. Lou pulls harder than both the Bulls in front of him. Yeah. The yeah. tight end ain't getting back. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you still not playing him. That's gonna make you go crazy. Like, yo, I'm actually doing what you're talking about. You using me in examples. So and you're not playing me? So did it make you um, be more like a, like a, I'm trying to figure it out, bro. Did it make you like a cancer to the team? Did it make you like less so, interested? So th that's what it did. So what it did was I got the... All right, fuck it then. Yeah, okay. I'll show up to practice when I feel like it. Yeah, I don't care. I don't care about running. I got to run in the morning. Right, whatever. Or you'll be punished, so to speak? Punished. Yeah, I I'll do the steps with you. I run them, and you know what I used to do? I used to, it got to the point where I, it was called Breakfast Club. I run the steps, but I would run at one pace. He'd be, run faster. Nah, I'm gonna run this one pace until you get tired of me. Do you think he was trying to control you, like, to, like, break you into, did you, like, I don't no, know. Go I know this. what you mean. Yeah. No, no, because he wasn't smart enough to do that. He wasn't the type. You can feel that vibe from a coach. Like what you're saying is he was trying to break me to make me something. No, that was not the case. He didn't have the mental capacity to do that. Wow. He didn't have that. A make you to break you type of coach is the coach that's running you through a wall, but is, is like letting you get your reps. Not running you through the wall and then when it comes time, just forget about you. Nah, that ain't, that ain't, you wasn't building me inside. So you like two, three years into this, like, and I'm still trying to figure out why you stayed with all this talent, bro. You go to your teammate, you said you met your best friend up there, you want to speak to that? Maybe that's yeah, like, I mean, he had a lot to do with that. He had, because I still, no matter what, I had the vision of us somehow being in the NCAA tournament at Rhode Island, me and him. That's, it, it grew as the years went on. So like, it's just funny because my senior year, I was leading the nation in scoring. Right, my yeah. first 11 games, I had 40 the first game of college basketball. And yeah, 30, 40. 38 against George Mason. They beat us 92-90 in overtime. I had 38, and I was averaging my you junior started. year. You started? Huh? You started? Yep. So senior year, you finally were yeah. a full-time starter. So, so senior year here, and um, 
we 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 in it. We got all freshmen. Me and my best friend are the only upperclassmen that play. Okay. So we got a freshman starting point guard, a freshman center, and then a, a junior um, small forward. So first game of the season, I score a wild number amount of points. Um, next game, we go to Texas at Texas. I scored like twenty. I think I had like twenty five and nine. The next game we go to Nebraska. I had like maybe fourteen, fifteen. There was a Nebraska was prepared. They was like, we know who you is. We mm-hmm. know you you lead and you the leading scorer. Nebraska defense was just insane. And like I and, I, and like I said, like I, I swear to God, at one point it was just like, yo, like, like I want to just stop stop shooting this John or, um, but we going through. I'm leading whatever. Now within the. Locker room, it was fights, it was just, co- it, it was chaos. No, let's speak to it. You said it was in the locker room, in your locker room, yeah. like amongst the team. Like the team, so like it was, they, it was kind of clicky. The freshmen, they rocked with the freshmen. The, you know, the juniors were two foreign players, so they kicked it. Me and O would kick it, but I would kind of, kind of get the, I was trying to get the freshmen to buy in. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody else was just everybody else. Everybody had their own agenda. Everybody had their own thing they was trying to do. And I was the one, because I'm like, it was senior year. I think I think Coach Cal got this saying, um, freshmen want to play, sophomores want to start, juniors want to score, seniors want to win. Because it's the last year. You trying to play as many games as possible mm-hmm. your last year. So I'm like, man, listen, I'll even not be the leading scorer if that's what it takes for us to win. Because... I was scoring all them points. No plays was being ran for me. Seriously, no plays was being ran for me. I was shoot, I shot over fifty three percent from the field. And fifty three percent from the field. And uh, yeah, there's one other one. But so I was efficient. I wasn't out there jacking. So I'm just like, with all of that, I was guarding other teams' best players. He's still burning you out two ways. You know, this two-way player thing, a thing in the NBA now. But it's different. The NBA is, the NBA is soft. Like, right. they, 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 I'm to college, I'm talking about when you really, college different because these kids, is, they ain't playing for nothing except winning. They ain't getting paid. Yeah. So they, you out there really to win the league, man. I'm cool. I can come out here and coast. I got my 2.5 mil check. I ain't yeah. chill. I'm just trying to play, play as long as these extensions go. So, um, so you know you 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 you're the leading scorer in the nation, mm-hmm. um, but you're still under the same coach. Like, what is his relationship with you like in these eleven games? I'm trying to understand the dynamic, man. Like, it still it still didn't change. It it was it was all right. So that game we lost to George Mason. I scored sixteen straight points from the all. It was um, I'm sorry, it wasn't sixteen straight. It was like thirteen and you no, know, it was like ten and five more. Cause Sponge hit the shot to put us in overtime. From then, from then on, I scored every single point we had to the end of the game. No play was ran for me. The game winning shot. Now, if I scored all the points, who you writing the game winning shot up for? You right, right. I got his idea what he was trying to do. He wanted to run a play for my best friend. Right. Cause he he was our best shooter. Mm-hmm. He's a big man, but he can shoot. I get it. He took me completely off the ball and put me in a corner. It's like as a decoy? Right. But that's not enough. Runs a play, handoff to a big homie for the shot. He And he, he almost made it. it toilet bowl. Missed. Mm-hmm. But my thing is, why not give me the ball? Let me run the play and be a real decoy. I think if he would have let me do it, he would have hit the shot. Because... The way it happened, it was like a jitter in the play. Mike didn't really get the shoulder off the big and to hand him the ball. So he kind of like caught it awkward and still managed to get it off. I feel like if they'd have been so worried about me scoring, like if I'd even turned my head to look like I was about to shoot it and then just give it to him, he could have licked his fingers, ate some chips, and shot that joint. Real right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I feel that. So, yeah, so um, these 11 games, Leah scoring the nation. Um, mm-hmm. They great accolades, bro. But tell me what happened at the end of these eleven games. So, man. and this is funny. So I, I I've never told nobody this story either, except for my mom and a few people, like very 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 few people. But it got so bad, and we were losing. 
So to me, all the points, the leading score in the nation, none of that matters. Nobody remembers that. Right. I mean, you can look it up, and it's there, but it don't matter. Who cares? I didn't win nothing, and it was one of the worst records in history. Like, what that sound like? Right. Newman's here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So they collate. And um, there was one morning we had a, we, we were playing against Yale. Yale was coming to our gym. We had a shoot around at 7. And the night before, the team was fighting in the locker room. Like, the coach's son is transferring, coming back from Virginia. And he gets into it. They, they just in there fighting. And I sat down and had, like, one of them out-of-body moments just looking at the locker room. And coach just, like, do, can't do nothing. Like, we was just, it was the worst, the worst. That really used to knuckle. Like, the team, like, your teammates. Knuckle. Knuckle. Like, they ain't know each other. Over what? Like, what could be that serious? Who playing in front of this person? Who shouldn't be? Or he called me this, he called me. That's how bad it was. Oh, so with all of that, I had this one surreal moment the night before Yale's game. And I was sitting in there watching it. I'll never forget it. And my best friend's seat in the room, he, we had like special seats when we watched film, was like on the other side where we could see each other. And I just remember looking at him and his face, he looked at me the same way. And I finally, I got up, you know, whatever, they fighting, whatever, I changed my clothes, leave. The next morning, I get up real early and um, I was up to go to shoot around. I, was, I wanted to get there a little early because I was in my head. I was like, yo, I want to shoot some free throws before I really get to doing our shooting drills. I got across the parking lot from the gym and I stopped. And my body just turned around and started walking back to my room. To this day, I can't tell you, like, why I couldn't stop walking back to my room. Like, just keep it all the way 100. Like, I don't have no answer for that. I just turned around and started walking back. And I went in my room and shut the door. And then I was just in my head, like, yo, I quit, yo. All right. And I quit. And I remember I was talking, I called my mom. and told her, I was like, man, I just want to come home. And she was just like, you know, like, Calling me out, you just you stop being a coward, you acting this way, man. And she was right. And um, you know, I hung up the phone, whatever we done, I go to sleep, went back to sleep. I wake up to uh to coach banging on the door. Coach Harris, he was used to coach at NC State, he was new. Uh, my senior he banging on the door. I'm thinking something wrong, but mind you, I for now I forgot about shoot around. Cause in my head, I'm like, I'm out of here. She don't know, but I'm about to drive home. Yeah. Coach banging on the door, I open the door. He's like, yo, is everything okay? I'm like, yeah. He like, I thought you was, something was wrong. I thought you was in here dead. You calling your phone, you ain't answering. So he's like, get dressed, come on, you late, come on. So we, I get dressed, go into the arena, put my practice gear on. He's like, all right, come on, we about to, you know, they already started, but come on. So I walk in, Coach Barron standing over there. He turns around and he's like, no, 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 don't even come in, don't even come in. But I don't think he knew like where I was at mentally. So I was like, that's what I wanted to hear. Like, I'm out of here. Like, I'm out. So I turned around and went back to my room. I get suspended indefinitely. The first time. That's the first one. We play Providence in like six days. Maybe, maybe not. Nah, we play Providence in like a week and a half. Because we got a game in between that that I didn't play. Okay. So. You know, I'm back in the gym. I, I I write coach a letter, and I and and I won't lie. Like I said, I don't exaggerate. All my teammates, even some of the guys that were like basketball ops that were like around the team, were you gotta come back, bro. You gotta come back. Like we genuinely know you, your heart, what you want. You have to come back. So after a while, I get back in the gym. Mike Montero, our old trainer, was a big part of that. He was in the gym with me, just shooting, and it was like. It was it was for for the mental, you know. People, some people go to the beach and put their feet in the water. Some people open a book. Some people meditate. For me, it was picking up a ball. You know, that's that was my piece. So Mike was there and he was just talking to me. That's crazy. Yeah. You know, I remember it. Remember it. That's so crazy. Cause in our all season, that's all I remember you doing, even in the uniform, still shooting in the gym, <sighs> and we would be over in the weight room. I don't know if you remember. Damn, that's some real full, full circle. That's circuit. how you know I'm not lying. Right, yeah. That's how you know I'm telling you the truth, bro. Yeah, there you go. And that's and that is my that that's my piece. That's why I, basketball for certain guys and what basketball is for me, there's no comparison. 
because without that ball, I wouldn't be who I am. And it might sound like, well, don't discredit who you are as a person, but nah, like I accepted that because it got to show me a lot about myself. It helped me depict people and who they are and what their intentions are. And I never thought I would cross a sea to go to be in Europe, but a ball opened the avenue to do that. You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, you know, all right, I want to come back. I think, please, you know, coach, I apologize. I, I'm sorry. You know, I, I woke up late. I, that's what I covered it up with. Mm -hmm. I woke up late. You know, I'm sorry. I, you know, I came back and signed a contract to never miss or can't be late to nothing the rest of the season. And I signed. I said, you know, you right. I won't. That was, that was me. Um, but he did it right before we were playing Providence, the rival game. So he really wanted me back so we could try to win this game. Right. We go play Providence, stink it up, lose by 40. I, I was one for a two for 11, had like eight points. Um, we lose, Jimmy, Jim, um, his son and then some other transfer bull, um, it was their first game, so we were just all out of whack. I haven't been playing for two weeks. These two new players are playing, it was, it was bad. So we lose, Providence kill us. After the Providence game, everything I felt during the suspension to yell when I quit, it came back right then and there. Because I now I'm like, you're going to try to use me. You brought me back for this game. You know what I'm saying? Is that something you said to him? No. It was, no, nah, I didn't say that. It was, this is me right after the game. Like, I, I know what's going on here. So my mom came up for the game, and I told her, I'm, I'm driving home with you. I'm, I'm going home with you. And I'm not staying. I'll come home. I'll come back for Christmas. Because now it's, it's like, it's like uh, December something. So um, she's like, no, just stay here, just stay on campus, everything will be all right, just keep getting better, keep, you know, she basically begged me not to come home. I was like, Mom, I'm not trying to hear that. So me and my mom drive home after the game. And um, over that Christmas, my mom got, um, she had a little, like, a, like she had a mishap with her lung, because my mom has, like, I'm not sure if it's sarcoidosis or lupus, but I know one of her lungs and then some canals in her heart are bad. And, you know, she almost died. So I went home and I, from the rip, I told them, yo, I'm, I'm gonna be back to school late I'm, I'm because of my mom, you know what I'm saying? So give me some time, I just wanna make sure she cool and then I'll be there. So I was keeping contact with Preston Murphy, who, who doesn't work there anymore, he's assistant coach. Preston Murphy, Kevin Clark, I mean, not Kevin Clark, Preston Murphy, um, can't even remember, Coach Harris, yo, I will be there, I'll be there, I might be late, but I'll be there. I walk in the gym, finally, I get to campus like an hour, I get, I get to uh, practice maybe like 45 minutes late, get in there, and then uh, you hit traffic in a couple of places, I call from a payphone in Connecticut, like, yo, I'm right in Connecticut, it's a little traffic, I'm coming, so, but, but they're on the phone making it seem like, yo, alright, he'll be here, he'll be here. I get there, coach told me, oh, go back to your room. Oh, all right, go back to my room. The next day, coach wanna talk to you. Go up in his office, hey, you done. And that's that's how it ended. That's what happened. I remember I got uh, Michael Curry, before Brett Brown was the Sixers coach, Michael Curry was uh, the interim Sixers coach. And I went down, Khalif Wyatt was going in there doing yeah. his little thing, he yo, come play pick up. Went down there, play pick up. Michael Curry was like, yo, can you be down here, you know, every day? You know what I'm saying? So I, I just remember that the second day I was down there, because the first day I was balling. So now they inquiring, who that, who that? The next day, I don't know Jeff Capel's dad's name, the coach, the old Oklahoma coach. Mm -hmm. His dad used to be part of the Sixers staff, old head. Don't, I don't really know his name. But he came up to me, he was like, him, Curtis Sumter, Aaron McKee and, and Curry all came over and was like, what you doing in college, man? Why you, why you, what you have, like some, what you do, what you really do? We want the real story. I had a European team ask me, did I have guns and drugs? Trying to inquire why they dismissed why you from the team. Why they dismissed me, yeah. And, I, and the team, the European team put on line that I did have drugs and, drugs and guns. You know what I'm saying? And that wasn't even the case. Why they try to tear your character down like that? I, I, I truthfully, man, if I had an answer, I would tell you I, I really don't know why. But, you know, um, 
I guess it's something to write about, mm. truthfully, because what's something? It's it's it's, it's eye grabbing. It's attention grabbing. Right. Imagine you flipping through something. And you see LeBron stopped by cops, has gun in the car. Whoa, what? There you go. So how many times we can get these people to look at this? That's that's what I think it was for. Mm, like clickbait. Yeah, like you, exactly. So so uh, once they dismiss you from the team, I'm assuming you probably stopped going to school. No, I graduated. You graduated? Yeah, I got my degree. I stayed. Um, I was still going to the game, sitting right behind the bench. It, it got. I, I actually got ugly one game. The crowd started um, chanting like, you know, "We want Jamal fired, Mary, stuff like that. But like I said, I would never. No matter what. I do not fully blame, I'm sorry, not fully, but I don't blame Coach Barron. Yeah, he, it was terrible. He, I think he was a terrible coach, but I don't blame him because the decisions that were made, I chose to come late. I chose to quit. I chose to say, fuck this, fuck this, fuck this. But, but them conditions, it's crazy though. I'm not sure who really wants, you never, you got to think about, you come from all this winning pedigree. That's, that's another thing about it, that you come from winning championships and competing at, you know, in the championship, if y'all want to lose into a program that's appeared to be struggling, you mm -hmm. know, um, right, right. and then you didn't never had that locker room dynamic, you know, like you said, scoop, torture, family together, yeah. we do it together, yeah. the team is bigger than me, right. and don't sound like it was any of them components up there. And just imagine, like, emptying your cup into something like that every day for four years, like, emptying yourself, hearing conversations of, man, he got an agenda. He got something he trying to do. And that's why a part of me, like, even at the pro level, like, it was frustrating because I only want to win. When you win, all the good stuff happens. And if if we if we can, I, I'll just be like, yo, if we can just buy in just for this little bit of time, everything we want can can, can be here. Yeah. So it was frustrating, man. It's been four years and um, it, it was it was tough. No man, that's a, that's dope that you at least finished and got the degree. Oh so yeah, that's big, bro. The mm -hmm. because you know a lot of us don't have the wherewithal to you know uh, whether you're gonna transfer or whatnot. Right. What have you to you know finish and get a degree is important and right. believe with something. Um, so just talk to me about you know what happened at the Rhode Island. You know pro aspirations and, and things like that. Um. So I mean, I played six years pro. You know what I'm saying? Um, from D League to Spain, Germany. Um, Latvia, been to uh, man, Republic of Georgia, um, Spain. Spain was probably one of my Spain and Germany were probably my favorites. But um, so I, I played the pro. I, Greece was my rookie year when I left the, the Sixers stuff mm -hmm. and went to um, went went to Greece that year. Um, what is overseas like as a for a baller? You know, obviously it can't be. You know, like the states, but like, what is going overseas to make a career out of basketball? Like, you know, overseas. Um, it's interesting. It's very different. Um, the biggest dynamic is like, you, you know, the culture. The, the things that aren't okay here are okay, or not, not, not even okay. But the things that aren't as accepted here are accepted there, and vice versa. Um, America does everything. The one thing I noticed that our country does is we do everything times 10. So like the arenas in America are the greatest arenas in the world. Now, don't get me wrong. There's some wild arenas in, in Europe, Africa, everywhere, Asia. But the college arenas are, think about it, it's a university. It has a 60,000 seat basketball gym. You know what I'm saying? So. I think it was um, the scale that the game is played on, and you gotta remember too. In Europe, soccer is the main sport. Okay. So basketball is the main sport in some in, in majority of Europe. So you're always kind of like, yeah, you're you're a basketball player, but this is Cristiano Ronaldo. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You ain't where it's so over here. Yeah, you're um, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, right. but this is LeBron James. So it's different, you know what I'm saying? So. That's right, that's right. I like that. It's a good comparison, bro. Mm -hmm. um, but you said you spent six years over there. Um, mm -hmm. What kind of numbers did you put up over there? Um, oh, so my rookie year, I averaged maybe about like, not a lot, like seven points, seven, eight points. Um, the, the point guard that they had was some old head. He was like 40. 
when I was like 21. Come on, bro. He was way better than me, though, dog. Like, he had it. Like, and I would go to him. I, I He helped me become a European pro at the point guard. That's another thing. I went from playing a guard, like a two, to a scorer and wing, to playing, being a point guard in Europe. So my whole pro career, I played point guard. And game's completely different. Like, I was, I'm 6'5", so I'm bigger than mostly every point guard I'm going up against. So I get the defensive advantage. Um, kind of basketball. Serena didn't do everything. Like, I don't have one thing I do very well. But that's what makes me good. Because you need me to be a glue guy, I could be a glue guy. I, I enjoy being Robin. Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoy being Robin. I, like, Batman, you can be Batman all you want. You got it. I'll be Robin. You know what I'm saying? So, that that was um, my rookie year. And then after that, I think I was always around like 11 or 12 and higher. The most I averaged was probably like 26. But, that was, yeah, that was the most. I, I never averaged nothing more, nothing higher than that. You know, I think it's interesting because a lot of us don't understand what overseas is like, you know, whether it's the pay, mm -hmm. whether it's the culture, the language. Um, even the dynamic when you come home or you play pro overseas, they probably assume um, you, you, what, you f f swimming in the dough, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, just speak a little bit about that. Um, so the one good thing about the European money is it's tax free. Okay. So you know, you if you you get a hundred grand, and let's say you get a four hundred thousand dollar league minimum NBA check, after taxes, that's doing probably like. When I say four hundred grand, that joint probably like three thirty something. Right. You know what I'm saying? You get four hundred grand in Europe. If you wanted to, you could bring four hundred grand home because they paying for your house. You don't pay bills and rent. They'll link you into usually like two, three restaurants you can go to whenever you want. Literally, all you can if you wanted to. Literally, the only thing you pay for is gas and whatever else extra you. Like, what I is it like living over there in some of these places? You can live, you can live in, what you say, three, six teams? It's amazing. You live, live in some of these dope places, man. I, my rookie year, I had a, a two, I had a house, um, driveway, I had a lemon tree out there, there's a park in front of it, and then I'd like, in the back, like, you could see the coast where Athens was at. I was living in Elefsina, so when you go out the back, you just see Athens around the coast. We was always in Athens, it was amazing. Like, it was the first time I ever, party and I came out and the sun was up. I, I caught my mom, I never forget mom, oh my God, I just came out of a club and it's 7 a.m. like the sun is out. Like, I don't know, do I go to sleep now or do I just stay up? <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, nah, it was it was amazing. It was amazing. I met some dope people. You still have some of the friends on the yeah, team? Absolutely, like that? man, absolutely. Um, for example, I guess we don't really have that in football, you know, a Canadian, mm -hmm. I have a buddy that played in the NFL, they end up going to Canada, but like, I think they have a certain percentage of like American players they let go play in Canada, mm -hmm. so they want the league to maintain a lot of its Canadian mm -hmm. roots, I guess. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there anything like that, restrictions like that overseas? Yes, um, so you get teams, up. I think the most Americans I've ever seen on the team is five. Okay. And I feel like five, anything less than like five is probably cool. But I seen some loaded American teams, teams with loaded Americans before. Uh, so, oh man, so let's just talk about who, who, you know, who's Jamal Wilson now, man. Um, a dad, a dad. first. Mm -hmm. and I, I, that's the, I'm most proud of that. Like, I think I'm doing a real good job with my son. Um, he's uh, much more confident than I was when I was his age. Like, he's better than me when I was his age. So, right, I'm happy. Like, he gets there. He he's he gets what he needs, what he wants. I think I'm doing a good job. And, um, but outside of him, Jamal now, like, man, I don't know. I'm learning, I'm till this very day. Man. I ain't gonna sit here and act like I got it figured out or sound like I got it figured out, but I'm, I'm coasting, I'm learning. I'm in the dark, trying to see where the next avenue at. Like, not perfect. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do in two months. I don't know. I'm 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 straight. I'm just learning, soaking it in, and just walking with, walking by the field. It's cool though. What made you um, you know, uh, like to even get you to like who you are now? Like, what made you stop playing ball? Or what made you give it up? So um, to speak? My second. So my 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 lady's pregnant as we speak. 
and I, think, you know, I thought about is the drop. I, I miss my son being born in person. I had to watch him be born uh, through FaceTime, mm. and um, you know, that's something I could never get back. Like I never get to start over with him and smell him and like that newborn. There you go. But I got home in three months and saw him like as a baby, but nothing. Would, I could never get that back. I, I, I don't know what that's like. So when I found out, you know, we are having another one, I instantly thought about moments I, and I compared it to. I said, do I want the stresses of my passion and what I really want to try? And I'm just do I keep running in place, hoping for something better? Or do I miss out on watching this baby? Do I miss out again? and live with that because I was trying to fight, fight, fight for something that I won't be able to do the rest of my life but my kid gonna need it. So, literally, I, I don't know if I'm not gonna play next year. I just stopped playing, like, recently, recently. So, yeah. I'm, like, I, I, I don't know. You, you know, but you know, you know, the comfort. Okay. So, you know, family's extremely important. So, mm -hmm. even outside of that dynamic, bro, mm -hmm. you didn't live a lot of your dream. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So like, so even being comfortable putting it away, and you talking about life after sports and ball, mm -hmm. like, and you know, you know, time putting the time back into your family, bro. You done seen a lot. You done went a lot of places. You done experienced a lot. You know, so I can see why you know you'll be comfortable hanging it up. You know, and and I'm gonna be honest, it's not it's not that I'm comfortable because I'm not. I love basketball, bro. I love it. Like I love hearing sneakers screech. I like the smell. Like the ball, how the ball feel. Like, all right, like if I could, how many balls you think will work a nine to five but still play in the NBA? Like I would do it. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. I would do that. Like if I work a nine to five, and they don't pay me, but I, you know, my job pay me, but I still travel and play. What? Sign me up. Mm -hmm. I'm just here for the game, and that will never go. You know that'll never go away. I tried it. I even tried to burn that fire out. Like. I tried to, yo, like, like something else. Like, this hurts too much because it ain't what I want it to be. So why you like it so much? Mm. It's kind of like a, like that girl. Like, you know, she don't want you. Why you, why you keep trying? Mm. But I don't know, man. She did. It's something. Like, I got to have her. Yeah. And I'm battling that to this day. You know what I'm saying? Don't ever let athletes who, do, who aren't doing what they're doing or want to do in the moment say, yeah, you know, I'm cool, huh? It ain't that. That fire there, that's still there because you made when you made the choice, go back and think, Lou, why did you really pick that football up? Like, why did that? Lou, you could have been whatever else you wanted. You could have did anything else. You could have told your mom, you ain't you ain't had to tell her you wanted cleats. You could have told her you wanted a piano. Real right. You could have told her I want some, uh, some construction stuff. You know what I'm saying? And that made me think, like, I asked, I see, when I was younger, I used to be like, Janitor, like that's a t t to us, you know, we'll be like, man, that's a bullshit job. Yeah. But I met a janitor who whistles while he cleaning every. I can't wait to get up and go clean the food, the school hallway. You talking about Fred? No. Oh. He, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, yeah, Fred. There you go. Somebody wakes up every day happy to do whatever it is they doing, and right. that's that's where it's just like, damn, like. Then I know how I feel and what I see is meant for me. I just don't know how I'm gonna get it. That's uh, you know, this podcast came from out of a space just like that, bro. Mm -hmm. Like uh, playing football, coaching football. Mm -hmm. I got a bachelor's and a master's in sports mm -hmm. administration, Money. and um, and now I'm just trying to you know impact and get the story out and just mm -hmm. mentor through sports and help people with other people's stories now. Man, and I think that's dope, man. I, I caught wind of this and I read. I love reading. Right. I rather and I don't. I, I, if I had to, you know, choose between listening and reading, I always read because I like the hard copy of stuff. And I read over some of your stuff, and I'm just like, man, like the avenue you in, keep going because like what you got here is a gem. A lot of podcasts talk about what's in the loop and what's what's popping and trending, but it's you know it's all right to be regular. It's all right to spit some stuff that when, you know, me and you leave here, something might have resonated with a listener or with us here, where we'd be like, damn, you know, that kind of hit home. Maybe I should, let me write this down. Maybe I can work on this. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I can, uh, I can go and better myself or something like that. So anytime I can see somebody big enough people, giving them a platform to have a voice in a positive way, man, 
by all means, you know, it's, I'm for it. It's important. You know? All right, man. Just uh, get to the end of this. Yeah. Recommend me three athletes that you want to hear from, man. Ooh, three athletes. Um, yeah, it'd be pretty cool to see Scoop up there. Um, Scoop, you already did a real Tony Chanel was a major one, man. I I I I love Tony Chanel. That was a major one, but Scoop. Um, you know who I would like to see in here? Uh. It was this little boy that used to play football from Mount Airy, boy, uh, uh, Rob Holliman. Mm. Little Rob. You know what's funny? I've been, I've, I've been had my eyes on Rob, man. He done killed us on the field a couple of years. Yeah, little Rob, little, little <laughs> yeah. Rob, little Rob. I, that, that'd be dope to see because Rob was the guy on the weight limit football. Mm -hmm. Like, I, and it'd be cool because he kind of just disappeared. Like, he was so good, but then high school came and now you just didn't hear, I didn't hear nothing from him. But Rob, see, like Rob would be cool. I would like to watch and hear, you know, how that went. Give me one more. And um, Hanif Edwards. I don't know who that is. So, um, he went to North Catholic before it closed down. Okay. South Philly boy, 18th and Carpenter. Okay. Um, his at name on Instagram is. You can send that to me, bro. I think it's like Neef SP, but. That's a thorough. That's a thorough book. I, I would. I would sit down and like, and hear headphones in and listen to it. All right, man. Right. Right, uh, I'm gonna try to get them, man. Um, I, like I already had my eyes on Rob, yeah. but I'm gonna try to get them. You know, we going we try to package up these seasons how we want to okay. put this stuff out, but. Okay. Um, yeah, bro, I really appreciate you coming up for here. Sure. This, story. this was dope, man. For I sure. enjoyed this, man. This time flew by. So did I. Would you believe we almost had two hours? <laughs> yeah, I ain't feel like it, man. Oh, man. But thank you for coming up, man. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me, man. Good morning. Think well, put that soon.